Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of A Black Man Sketch, Season 3, Episode 4. Today's episode, we're going to be discussing PTSS, uh, also known as post-traumatic slave syndrome. And for those of you that are under familiar with post-traumatic slave syndrome, I suggest a book by Dr. Joy DeGroy. And in the book, uh, Mr. Gray argues that post-traumatic slave syndrome is a result of of post-traumatic stress disorder arising from the experience of slavery transmitted across generations down to the present day. Along with the stress of contemporary racial prejudice, this manifests as a psychological, spiritual, emotional, and behavioral syndrome that results in a lack of self-esteem, persistent feelings of anger, and internalized racist beliefs. PTSS mean to me, um... You have a certain way of life that you've been taught for so long that you can't escape from. More of when you will go to school nowadays, they teach you to basically do what you're told. The only way to make it in this life is to go to work, work in factories for the rest of your life, pay bills, be a slave to life instead of living life. You know, um, a good example would be... Um, once I, when I was younger, you know, um, more people, a lot of adults, you know what I'm saying, they will always tell me that I can't do something or this won't work out or get an actual job, you know what I'm saying? Don't follow your dreams, get a job. You have to do this to pay this rent. You got to do this to pay that, you know what I'm saying? Um, you forget to follow your essence of your body, you know what I'm saying? The, the person that you really are. Because you're programmed to be a certain way And because they were programmed to be that way And plus their lives started more You know what I'm saying Like their lives were started where slavery was just abolished You know what I'm saying So they have a lot of ways of them that actually are slave mentality And while you're being raised by these people that was raised by fellow other slaves You know what I'm saying you basically take on those those same traits. You know what I'm saying? It's just passed down because that's all that they knew. So they're going to teach you those same slave routes, you know? Right. And it's up to you, somebody to break that cycle, you know? Uh, but I don't think people are aware of it because, you know, you're just told to listen to your elders. Um, you know, don't define, stay in a child's place. And once you get older, that programming... It's been programming for so long in you, you just can't get rid of it, you know? And, right. you know, it's, it's it's about time that we do discuss it and have something, you know what I'm saying, have some type of grounding to understand where we came from because they are erasing our history as we speak. They're in our temples. They're in our pyramids right now, uh, making our hieroglyphics. They are making them lighter as we speak, you know? To erase who we are And we're And the time Just keep on going So until Somebody bring it to the light We gonna always suffer from it Um For me How I think and see of it Is a never ending battle Because it's something that's I mean been going on for uh, These hundreds of years And still going on today Like an aspect of Past, present, and future We're still affected by it Like put it this way We're kind of still Theoretically, under the colonizer's grasp, you know what I mean? We were in the past, we are in the present, and if you believe in conspiracy theorists and all that type of stuff, we're still, we're doomed for the future. Now, part of that battle is how our history is being fed to us. One issue I have is that whenever we have what's considered Black History Month, we get a textbook Black History, you know what I mean, that says we were slaves, you know what I mean? Then we get Martin Luther King, uh, Malcolm X, Harriet Tubman, whatever. You know what I mean? And then we got free, and now we just grow to be statistics, or we got to come confront, conform to be like them, to be middle class, and got to sell your soul to be in the upper echelon. You know what I mean? It's a it's a program programming that's kept towards us. You know what I mean? If it ain't people like us, if it's not us educating ourselves, they're just giving us programming that just says you're a slave. That's it. 
Yo, uh, yo, it's Kai. Um, yeah, for me, it just means I look at it as being tricked at our spot, honestly, because it's like how how we start. You feel me? We didn't did everything. Like we didn't we didn't made so much stuff. We didn't built so much stuff, and then for it all to just turn around and be taken, you know, just from the knowledge, lack of knowledge, and then. Like it's moving in today into our our young people, our younger kids, younger than me. Like they, it's kids on the block think it's it's cool to tote guns and kill people. Like they think that's cool. You feel me? Like I talk to my youngs every day. They think that's cool right now. Like, but it's it's it's, it's got something to do with the parents in, in the house. And then like even then, like like I said, following, like they following a whole other generation that was taught wrong. You feel me? That's that's the problem. So. uh what it means for me is just we need to go ahead and take everything back and, and get on top uh, in these books and stuff that, and things that we actually need to be learning, not stuff that's ain't got nothing to do with what's going on in today's time. As far as like for it, the way I feel, I feel like it's like manipulation and death because like people don't even know slavery is still happening. It's just happening in a different way. Like they've been manipulating us to like feed us false things that we created, but they saying this person made it when nobody knows. And people don't even know it. Like they the ones that put drugs into the hoods and started that. And they just looking at us killing each other. Like that's what they want. Cause we slowly just killing each other off. People don't even understand that. And that's just proving a point. But I just feel that it's a lot of like taking and telling us like, you got to do this every way. Like a company, man, like they making you, Limit like what you can do instead of like you doing what you want to do yourself. But yeah, Brian Tier for myself, uh, I personally believe PTSS or post traumatic slave syndrome is one of the most overlooked, dire sicknesses that our country faces and deals with on a day to day basis, um, and it, and it's severely overlooked by society as a whole. And we as a people got to do better when you have uh, a stigma on black men such as we're lazy and we don't want to do certain jobs. And, you know, a lot of that's true, but the reason behind it is because, you know, we built an entire country for free on our backs. Not only was it stolen from us, they had us re-renovate it and build more and do it for free. All why our women and children were, were taken from us and beaten from us and all kinds of tricks and lies. You know, there was people out there that were promised that if they worked and worked and worked, that one day they'd have enough to get the freedom and they were tricked out of it over and over again. So um, I feel for those people and you got to you got to give us, you know, a little leeway if we, we don't believe, you know, the what's been laid out before us. There is also the industry of cotton, all the, all the clothes in America are made by cotton, but you can't get one black man to go work in a cotton mill. I know I don't want to do it simply because I told, we're told that we would pick cotton fields for years and years. And I was shown pictures of our hands bleeding, you know, and I don't want nothing to do with cotton. I don't care. There's not enough money you can give me to go pick cotton right now, you know? And, and it's sad because that is, is something, uh, that comes from the earth that we've been tricked out of even allowing ourselves to partake in. You know what I mean? We could be making our own clothes for our kids at home, saving money. You know what I mean? Making our own jackets, quilting our own pillows and stuff. We don't want to touch that. You know what I mean? And you got the, the fear of every day. We can't even get in the car and drive to the store because we're scared of the police. I mean, I don't got to, give it too many examples of why we're scared of the police now do i i mean only every single day in america history will give you an example of why we walk around with a natural fear and it's just these type of things that we have to bring light to and and let let people know that these fears and these things are real there's a lot of us that won't go to the doctor and things like that stem from the tuskegee experiments where They pumped our ancestors full of syphilis, stuff like that, that has gone unrecorded and undocumented for centuries is the reason why we don't trust a lot of our American doctors. And it's the reason why a lot of black men go with symptoms unchecked 
and a lot of high high blood pressure, heart issues, and diabetes are killing our men because we're not taking care of each other. Um, a lot of us don't know our history as well, basically saying, like, it's a reason why they want to keep us grounded, you know. Uh, we're powerful, very, very powerful together. Um, we did have a lot of people that revolted, and they seen the outcome of that and led up to the tears of trail. Uh, well, let me say this. As we unify, they divide due to the fact of we don't need brute force. We don't need anything. We kill people with compassion every day. Um, they see it in our everyday lives, how we can be so forgiven, how we can be so powerful and we can get, we can connect with the actual natural source. Our energy leads and bleeds on others. You know, it's easy. It's easy to go around taking from others, but to have the power to have somebody strictly love on you and give to you due to the fact of who you are and the power that you hold within you, you know, our actual, our, our, our skin gives off the vibrant and gives energy. You know what I'm saying? Our skin, you know what I'm saying? It's connected to the source of the sun. You know, we knew how to farm. We knew how to, we knew how to turn nothing into something. And we still too did it this day. You know, um, what they really, what was really happening is they're scared that we're going to take over, but we don't want to take over anything. You know, we just want to live our lives and be great. You know, we don't, we not the, we're not the greedy ones. We're not those savages. We don't have, we don't have that mentality in us at all. We are loving creatures and we just want to live on this earth that God made for us to live on and walk on and breathe. I can see it in every day. You know, I, I go to work, you know, I, I'm, I'm a door dasher. I, so I see I see the prejudice every day for no reason. You know, I see a white man come in. They ask, they they show the little order or whatever. You know, they don't ask them no further questions. They don't ask them to confirm the order. It would just be little things like that. Then I come in, you know, dreadlocks in my hair. You know, it's not really dreadlocks. They're called just locks. Um, You know, I walk in. They ask me. Can you conform the order? They ask me what's the order. They ask me to repeat the order. You know, I just be like, I don't, I don't let it get to me. I just understand that they understand my power. You know, they're afraid of me because that's what they're taught in the news. They're afraid of me because that's what they're bred to believe that we are savages. No, something made us the way that you see today. We had our own. People came to our land and disrupted our peace. And what we knew to be peace And now we're sitting here fighting Trying to figure out who we are Within the midst of killing each other Committing crimes But that's anybody That's suffering and struggling As a human being Anybody back against the wall You're going to do what they got to do to survive You know But now you want to place criminal on us No we were, we were free We taught and we built everything that w- that's that's out here today. We built a lot of things, lights. We made, you know what I'm saying? George Carver. What's his name? George Carver? Pen- George, you know, George, George Washington, Washington Carver. Carver. Yeah. Peanut butter. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? The stop, stop signs, the stop lights. That's all us. You know what I'm saying? We paved the streets. We paved the way for everything, you know? And But they erasing our history and making us forget who we are. And they didn't give us our reparations. They didn't do anything. Well, when we got free, they just said, here, here you go. And they still tried to segregate us, tried to treat us like scum. You know, it's the results of a lot of trauma that we deal with. We're not criminals. We're hurting. We're bleeding inside. We're lost. You know, you strip away, you take a, you take a person's culture away from them, you know, leave them with nothing. Of course, of of course, we trying to. Of course, you are back against the wall. We're gonna do some things that's out of out of our character, you know. You know what I'm saying? Um, I believe that somewhere along the lines, people look at me crazy when I say this all the time. But segregation was one of the best things that ever happened to us. You know what I'm saying? And then once we actually understood that and we built our black wall street, once we got tired of them saying we couldn't come in our, in their places, you know what I'm saying? We built our own. They burnt our stuff down because they lost their fortune because we are the main consumers. You know, these things that 
our people don't understand and they don't read about because they too, we're too busy listening to rappers and everything because we're pushing their agenda. You know, the you know you can't even make it. Uh, you can't even make it in the music industry unless you're talking negative because trauma sells. You know, things of that nature, and that's the reason why our people are forced to do what they got to do to make it. You know what I'm saying? But it's a lot of people out here just trying to make a change in which the news or whatever won't shine light on because they don't want you to know who exactly who we really are. But really, we're inventors. We're creators. You know what I'm saying? We, we, don't, we don't naturally be aggressive. You have to do something to make us aggressive. You know? The same way for the other side, the other people, however you want to say other races. They would do the same thing if you put a gun to their head. You, you slave them for 400 years and strip them away and at the end of it all just say, hey, you're free and then still treat you like nothing. You, let that happen to you and you see what's going on. You would be doing the same thing, but nobody wants to think that way. And it's okay, you know? It's okay because one day we are going to unite. One day we are going to come together and we're going to shine light on this world. We're going to take what's ours. And we're going to do it in a peaceful way. It don't have to be in a violent way like they did to us. What I had said was that, like, right now, knowledge is the best tool we have. It ain't the only one, but right now it's the best one we have because, like Tina will be saying, they're taking away our, our history. The school, the schools only give us a textbook history that keeps us in a certain spot. Now, it takes people like us that are becoming aware, you know what I mean, we're being taught by the few elders we have in our communities. You know what I mean? Now we have to share that knowledge amongst each other in this generation and pass it on to the next generation. You know what I mean? That's part of how we keep keep the fight going. And to go back to history, you know what I mean? Um, not only did we invent, used to invent all this stuff and all these types of things, but we were considered kings, queens, gods, and goddesses. You know what I mean? There's a reason. There's a reason why out of encouragement or out of endearment, you know what I mean, we call each other that as um in a instead of the N word. You know I mean, so it's just reclaiming our power. Think about the talents that we naturally have today as black people, you know what I mean? How what we could do by ourselves individually. Imagine what our ancestors did back in those civilizations when we were royalty. You know what I mean? So I feel like we should tap understand, recognize and like I said, tap into that part of ourselves. But it also goes in, like, it's a step, because, like, people don't understand that they still have slave, slave mentalities. Um, I'll be on for, uh, social media every day seeing um, the Willie Lynch is still here because you see on every day they talk about female, even females say, it, it, like, it don't matter. Females even say light-skinned dudes, weakened and dark-skinned dudes. We more sensitive this, sensitive that. Dude, what are, you, what are we talking about? We're black, it's this point blank. When they look at us, they see black. They don't see light skin, dark skin, none of that. You know what I'm saying? When we was in the, when we was in on them plantations, light skinned people might been in the house, but they still had brown skins in the house. Uh, they still had light skins outside. They still had brown skins outside. You were slaves, period, to them. So I, us being pinning that against each other is not making it no better. You know what I'm saying? We got to stop seeing different shades and see who we are. We are black men and women, period. And, and it, 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 it grinds my gears sometimes. I'm not going to lie to you. It grinds my gears. You know what I'm saying? They might say I'm sensitive with light skin for that. You know what I'm saying? I don't care because I'm black. I'm a black man and I know, you know what I'm saying? I walk every day, wake up, look in the mirror, I see black. You know what I'm saying? Every day when I go outside, they see black. You know what I'm saying? They not saying he's a light-skinned man. No, he ain't saying that. That it's a black man. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like everybody just needed to be a light and read a little bit. You know what I'm saying? We want to, we kind of want to leave you guys with a, a assignment at the end of this all. You know, I just want somebody to read the Willie Lynch and understand what he meant in that book to pin the light against the dark. In the dark against the light Just read for me Just read But it's crazy Because you try to give us that knowledge You try to share that knowledge Our people don't want to hear it And it saddens me That they don't want the knowledge They just want to live their life Because they say Oh well I'm not a slave anymore Ooh, Yes you are Yes you are 
You go to where you wake up and you go to work every day. You you work to pay bills. You don't you don't work to live. Think about it. You know what I'm saying? Just because you make a little bit more change than the next man, you know, you're you're still slaving, bro. You know what I'm saying? If you got to wake up every day and you got to still work and you cannot enjoy that money, you're slaving, no matter how you look at it. And it's up, it's up to you to open your eyes and want to open up your mind, the, the knowledge, stop being so tunneled, stop having tunnel vision, stop being so blind and so nearsighted. You know, you got to see far ahead of you. And these things are bred into you by the uh, the uh, slave owners. You know what I'm saying? They they basically put it into your ancestors. Your ancestors put it into you. you know what I'm saying because your moms was closer to that time period. Your dad was closer to that time period. Your granddad was closer to that time period. Most of us were raised by our grandparents more than we was raised by our actual parents. A lot of us. So I know for a fact a lot of us have that slave mentality because I bet you you go and you tell your peoples, oh, I want to be a rapper. Oh, I, I, oh, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna own my business. I see it every day on the on the media. Oh, I got a new job, a hundred likes. Congratulations, you got a job. Oh, I started a business. You might get about three, four likes. We don't even support each other, and so we started supporting each other, and we start reading these books, and we start reading. Period, because we don't like to read, because that was programmed as well as a slave. If you not know, you were not allowed to read. Now you don't like to read, and you have a choice to read. You don't like school. When you go to school, you're and you like to learn in school. You're you're labeled lame, a dork, nerd. Stop that, bro. Stop it. That man is smart, and he's going to be something. And nine times out of ten, the person that you're making fun of is going to be your boss. So. You're going to be a slave to that And you're not going to like it at all You know So really open you guys' mind And really just read Sit down and challenge yourself to read something From back in the day You know Read about what you actually went through Read about what they programmed you to be Love family And uh, yeah this is Kai Um, Man uh, Tino and Wes definitely just hit Mostly everything But uh, to add on I'm going to just say we need to get ourselves out this box, man. I feel like they put us all, all black people in a box and look at us all one way. But uh, to change that, um, we just need to, like Tino said, man, we just need to stop being so tunnel vision to one thing. Like, be open to a lot more things, like reading. I just was telling a group last week that I did yoga for the first time. Like, that was crazy to me because it's like, being able to work on your breath and stuff, that's not something that we all would think about doing. But, you know, doing stuff like that, that's stuff that we need to be doing. You know, a, a friend of mine would tell me, oh, that's lame. That ain't something we do. But then again, it's like, what are we doing other than that? You know, we're not doing no better. We need. Why not go try something else, try something new? You know, so that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say just get ourselves outside this box, read more, get more knowledge. Yeah, if you get in a fight, you better control your breathing. <laughs> First person to get tired usually hits the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Maurice, and I just feel like like it's so many ways that we don't understand. We can elevate and just pick our mind. Like for prime example, it's like the other day I went to go shop at an organic store to like change my eating ways, and it wasn't like a single black person in there, and I just seen nothing but you know predominantly white people, and they just looking like this man is really shopping here. Like we don't see many black people like eating good, eating healthy, like. Prime example, we don't think deep into it because we don't see it. Like, TV shows, it's barely any black kids. It's just all white kids. It's like a couple. You know, I see it as like, they put them in there like, oh, yeah, we throw two in there. They're like, oh, at least it's like two black kids in the TV show. But that's not cool. It's like, it's nothing but like, you know, majority of their race. And, and then like, to get more deep into it, it's like, these things we do, we don't understand. We could be more powerful. Like, they look at the little stuff we do, like, that they don't expect us to do. So... The more you elevate your mind, the more powerful you can be. I feel that. I dig yeah. that. Um, one area, Brian here, one area I think we can learn and grow for as a community and um, understanding that by 400 years of history can only be reversed one day at a time. And um, we can watch our behaviors daily. Um, a lot of our weeks have been structured for us and we don't even know it. So back in the day, Monday through Thursday or Friday, the slaves would work the fields and the foremans, the white men who are on the horses, um, keeping everybody in line and sometimes punishing our people got paid like a nine to five, just like everybody else. 
um, which means they had Saturday and Sunday off. So in order to keep the slaves in line and keep them from running away, the slave master would bring out the barrels of alcohol. The slaves would drink Friday night, Saturday night, get up, go to church Sunday morning, and not realize that they had the whole weekend to escape, but they were too busy getting hammered. And a lot of money that they would save to buy back their freedom, they would spend on the cockfights or extra portions of alcohol so that when they woke up Sunday morning, they would be set back and they would never be able to buy their freedom. Just something to think about when you work all week and you get ready to give half of your money back Friday night and Saturday night, guys. So you telling me partying is a distraction? It is, it is. <laughs> and um, also with that is our words. Um, a lot of our terminology and the words that we use have been affected by the post-traumatic slave syndrome. When we tell our kids or our, our family members in a joke, ha, they work me like a Hebrew slave, or I've been working all day for the man, things like that that we use in our er- everyday vocabulary. Some of them we think are jokes. You know, we tell somebody, not Joe black ass, you know what I mean? Or just a lot of stuff that we say. We need to be conscious of your words that you use and know that you're passing them down to the future generation. Yeah, so let's power. cut out all the stupid jokes, all the slave jokes um, for the sake of our kids and for the sake of our future. You can listen to a black man sketch wherever you get your podcast. And if you have a question, a comment, or like to suggest a show, you can email us at a b m s at ujamaplace dot org. Ujama Place serves the most marginalized population in society, primarily African American men ages eighteen to thirty, providing holistic transformation for men experiencing inequity at the intersection of race and poverty. Ujama Place helps them achieve brotherhood, stability, and personal success. Join us for an info session Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. For more information, visit ujamaplace.org.